The story that I'm going to tell today has to do with being caught on an interstate highway in a terrible storm that involved freezing rain and awful road conditions and quite a few accidents, trying to make my way home in the darkness of night. And it happened in northwestern Indiana when I was living there from about 2002 to 2000. Eight when I was working at Indiana State Prison teaching for Ball State University. And there, the one destination point was Notre Dame University, which you know is in South Bend, Indiana, really far up on the northern end of the state, about centrally located. And that was on a good driving day, about an hour and a half from where my family lives in northwestern Indiana, um, officially DeMott, but actually closer to Rose Lawn, right on a county line road in, in a pretty uninhabited part of Indiana. So normally I would you know, drive up to Michigan City and then drive over after I finished work uh, to Notre Dame to do some research and then drive my way back home. Or sometimes I would go to Notre Dame for conferences or to, to meet up with uh, friends who were working there or studying there. And as I remember it, and I'm not sure what year this actually was, it was in the 2000s, and there was some sort of conference that I was going to. I want to say it was most likely one of the Center for Ethics and Culture conferences, which were uh, you know, quite a big deal back then. They had um, not just a single annual conference, but a whole bunch of other things going on. And uh, Alistair McIntyre was a fellow for that. As a matter of fact, uh, I had a friend from Italy who was, was staying there, who also I think was a fellow. I'm not sure if it was at that, that particular time. But um, I spent a lot of time on the Notre Dame campus and at the you know, involved in center events. And the weather was pretty bad. I think, you know, it, it, either it was a one day event or it was the last day of the conference. And I remember going to talks and like looking outside the windows and thinking, hmm, this looks pretty bad. I could take off now or I could just wait, it, you know, wait until the very end of the conference and then drive home and I'll, I'll do that instead. And that turned out to be, you know, overall uh, not a terrible idea because I didn't get in an accident or anything like that. But it, it was imprudent, and I'll tell you why. So by the time that I got outside and I was at my car, um, it had been freezing rain for quite some time. It was probably about 4 o'clock or so, and it was, it was winter time. So things are getting dark. And, um, you know, the sky is just raining down more, freezing rain. So, you know, I start my car up. At that time, I had a Ford Taurus station wagon, which is actually a replacement for yet another Ford Taurus station wagon that had been uh, totaled in a crash that had to do with a whole other uh, snowy day on uh, interstate highways uh, in, in uh, Indiana. But so anyway, I've got my, my, my car and I'm, you know, I start it up and, you know, get things going so the windows can defrost and I've got my scraper out there and I'm scraping away at the uh, frozen uh, now ice on, on my windshield and the other windows and starting to get myself comfortable. And I probably got on the road like 415, 430 or something like that. And road conditions were bad. They were already bad in South Bend. And in order to get home, what I needed to do was get from Notre Dame University to where I would pick up Interstate 80, which is a highway that spans the entire United States and um, runs parallel with a couple other highways for, for a while. So I would take 80 west and then I would intersect uh, Interstate 65 and take 65 south from about Gary, if you know where Gary, Indiana is on the map. So I'd go west and then do south, and it would be mostly interstate travel. So I was like, well, this is bad, but how bad could it be? They're going to have the snow plows out. I'm sure they put salt down. I'm sure they're scraping. I'm sure there's sand. Let me just get underway, <clears throat> and we'll get going. 
One of the things I probably should have done at that point that would have been quite prudent would have been to stop at a gas station and fully gas up. But I, I just wanted to get home. So instead, you know, I get on the road and I'm heading north to where uh, I'll pick up uh, I-80 and conditions are bad already. And there's already some cars that are like stopped or off or all, all sorts of other things like that going on. And then... Um, I make it to I-80 and I'm like, well, th this is, this is going to be okay because this is the, the route that the big trucks are taking and that actually made things much more dangerous. So let me tell you a little bit of a digression about Interstate 80. At that time, we not only had the regular semi trucks, you know, where you have a tractor and then you have a trailer, uh, we also had these two or three trailer semi trucks as well. And on I-80, even on a good day, if the wind is blowing hard, you can see these things kind of, you know, trying to maneuver themselves around. They're almost like trains on wheels. And they're, they're kind of dangerous to all the other traffic that's around them. But this is, you know, this is American logistics. We do so much stuff by trucks. So I get onto I-80 and it's already starting to get darker. The, you know, the freezing rain is still coming down, sometimes snow in some parts, sometimes just rain. The roads are slick. So traffic is moving slow. It's not, it's not proceeding quickly. And, you know, there are plows out, but it doesn't seem like they're doing much good. The road, you can feel it when you're used to driving in these sorts of conditions. It's sort of like walking on ice, something that if you grow up here in the upper Midwest, you learn how to do very quickly, right? You, you learn what it feels like to be on a rough patch of ice as opposed to a very slick patch of ice. You know how you have to take these little mincing steps. Well, you got to do that with your car because your car, after you're used to driving it for quite a while, becomes almost like an extension of your body. You can feel the tires and where they're slipping and where they're gripping instead. And it was mostly slipping. So you, you, you move slowly because you know that it's going to take you a long time to be able to brake. And you don't want to hit other cars because if you do, things get very unpredictable very quickly. You know, you're basically like solving complex uh, math problems about acceleration and forces in your head intuitively as you're, you're driving along. So, you know, traffic is, is moving slowly. And this is before I actually had a cell phone. So I wasn't going to be able to call home and, you know, say what was going on or anything like that. And um, I'm driving along and I'm like, oh, man, this is going to take a long time to get home. I bet it's going to take me two and a half hours as opposed to the one and a half hours that it normally takes me. Fast forward, it was actually four hours. Four hours for what would normally be a one and a half hour trip home. And, you know, there it was pretty harrowing, pretty scary. I-80 was good compared to what I-65 looked like. So it took me, I don't know how long, maybe an hour and a half to get to the interchange for... Um, I for, from I-80 to I-65. And these interchanges are where you, you know, you've got these on-ramps that are kind of circular and you've got to follow it. And they can be sloped. And, you know, if there's any sort of gradation to it, you can feel your car on the ice actually sliding down slowly. And that's pretty scary, too, because you know that you need to keep moving in this curved line well not curved line this this curve right rather than a straight line and you're like worrying about am i actually gonna get there am i gonna slide off of this on-ramp you know in some way um and so anyway i made it onto i-65 and now i'm like okay good i'm i'm headed home now i've got the first part of the journey behind me cool this is gonna be okay and it was not okay the wind was blowing Rain is still coming down, snow in parts, you know, there's a, I, I think I tailed a snow plow for a while at a distance, and even the snow plow was slipping. The roads were so completely slick that in parts we were just moving at like, you know, five to 10 miles an hour. 
um, long, long chains of cars and trucks trying to maintain some distance between each other. You definitely don't want to be up on each other's bumper at that time. It's now like completely night and you almost can't see anything. You're, you, you've got your defrost on, you've got your window wipers going back and forth constantly, and you're struggling to see what's going on ahead of you in this this storm and you still feel your tires sliding and slipping and not gripping on the ice and you're moving ahead almost like you know saying a prayer every moment that you don't fall off the road and fall off the road is indeed what i saw happen i saw a semi truck so you know semi truck is is heavy compared to a car it's massive right and they have many more tires, so they ought to be able to grip the road better <clears throat> than a car with only four tires and a limited amount of weight. There was a semi truck ahead of me, and we were we were um, just about stopped. We were moving about five miles an hour, and I saw this semi truck start a slow slide. And it actually, I guess the road at that point must have been, you know, uneven, kind of beveled. I saw this semi truck slide off of the road, like an egg coming off of a nonstick pan. And you could tell that the driver couldn't do anything about it. By this time, you know, as you're driving along, you, you passed dozens, maybe even hundreds of other cars and semis who were off the road, you know, some of whom had put their hazards on and had just pulled off and they were like, I'm going to wait out this, this storm. Others who had gotten into accidents already or who had like gone off the road into the median or the other side of the road and were stuck in the snow. And, you know, there, it was going to be hours and hours before tow trucks came out. One of the dangers with this is it was pretty cold too. So if you got stuck, you better hope that you had enough gas to keep your car going to keep the heat on because you could freeze out there. You know, it might be who knows how many hours before rescue crews came out because there were going to be so many people in need of, of help. So anyway, I kept proceeding like this down this, this ice slick road, um, you know, moving slowly. I think the fastest I, I was going at any point was maybe 20 miles an hour. And, uh, that wasn't, you know, a lot of it. And then, um, I'm, I'm driving past and I'm getting further and further south and it becomes less and less inhabited by, by that point. And I get to the um, place where um, I have a choice to make. Do I turn off from the interstate onto um, the road that would go to Lowell, uh, a town that's north of Rose Lawn, and then I would take country roads to get there. And I thought, well, I mean, the highway is pretty scary, but I don't know about the back roads. They may be even worse than this. And at least on the highway, I know what I've, what I've got, you know, in front of me. So I go past that exit. And I remember I saw somebody actually try to make that exit and get into a crash. And I was like, whew, man, I'm glad I didn't pick that. And I keep going from uh, that, I think it's two maybe that goes into Lowell, uh, Indiana two. And I need to get down to Indiana Highway 10, where I could turn off for DeMott or Rose Lawn. And, you know, I knew that once I got there, if I could actually make it to the on-ramp, I would be more or less okay because then I was only a, a mile, a mile and a half from my home. If, if worse came to worse and the car, you know, went off the road, I could, I could walk home along the uh, uh, 10 and then County Line Road and get some help. By this time, I'm getting kind of worried because I, since I didn't gas up, I'm at the point where I'm at empty. And the, you know, gas light comes on and there's, there's on American cars, right? You've got the empty thing, but you're not truly empty at that point. You got like maybe a gallon or two, 
when the light comes on, you know you're really getting close. You're you're basically on fumes. And so, you know, I'm driving slowly and um I think I was maybe I, I don't think I listened to the radio at all except to like try to hear weather stuff because it, it needed all my attention for where I'm going. And now the good thing about the off ramp for Highway 10 is Highway 10 runs over Interstate 65 as opposed to Lowell where it goes underneath it. So you're going up the off ramp and then you know it comes to a stop and then you can turn on to 10. Um, and going up in many respects is better than going down when things are really slick. I mean, you could get stalled trying to go up. And as I remember what I did, I actually, I, I went slightly off of the road there because I knew that the shoulder, which was paved, was rougher. And so I would be able to get more purchase there because I didn't want to go up and then slide back down, right? So I go up and I make it there and I get on Highway 10 and Highway 10 is pretty slick, but it looks like a, a snow plow had gone through there recently. So I was like, all right, so I just got to go less than half a mile to get to County Line Road. Got to turn on to County, County Line Road, which had not been plowed. Um, and then it's another half a mile north to the turn in for our driveway. And, and I did that. And... Um, you know, it was. It took me quite a while to get from 10 to County Line Road to our driveway and then get down. Uh, I, I think I didn't even like try to pull into the, the garage. I think I just maybe parked outside and then got back, got myself back inside. And, and my family was like, where were you? What was going on? We didn't hear from you. And I said, well, you know, the road conditions were really terrible. By that time, it was like, you know, 8.30, 9 o'clock at night. Um, the, the conference had been long over. And every, I mean, at that point in time, too, it was a bad winter storm. People were losing power. Um, there were, you know, announcements about, you know, closing highways and stuff like that. So I made it home. Um and that was probably one of the worst driving winter conditions that I've been in, except for the one where I actually totaled my car. And, and a few from the 1990s when I was uh, working up at Lakeland College as a security guard. But those are stories for another time. Maybe you'll get a, a kick out of this story. I was just reminded because there's ice storms and freezing rain and snow going on in other places than, than here in Wisconsin. And uh, it was reminding me of that one terrible night when I was on the road, uh, just hoping not to run out of gas, hoping not to go off the road, hoping not to crash, hoping that I wouldn't get hit by somebody else. And I did make it home.